session ladies and gentlemen welcome to this live stream especially if you're watching from youtube when i just thought no one's on the live people have to come in and join but when you watch from youtube you watch from the get-go so welcome to this video today um which would be a pre-recording if you're watching from youtube and it's great to have you i uh, made it a slight tweak to the audio on the market just wanted to uh test it real quick actually so just want to see if i'm not like if my voice is not overpowered um in what i'm saying uh so let me just go to my other account i'm just trying to get there okay welcome to those who just joined in um appreciate you guys joining in if you're just popping in or not know that god loves you and if you want to stay for a bit for bible reading we're going to read uh matthew chapter 21 and 22 um i just want to see if i can access the live from my phone and test the audio levels testing one two one two testing one two one two should be okay guys i just w wanted to see if it was not like overpowering and if the audio is overpowering you can just let me know guys um anyway uh richard welcome to the live welcome to to the evening session man great to have you hope you been having a good day man good evening suliaman uh suliaman welcome welcome uh, thank you for those kind words there. God bless you. Um, fair, fair, Zilla. Jefferson, thanks for the 20 roses there, man. Appreciate that. God bless. Uh, infamous Harp, welcome. Uh, how was your day? My day was good, thanks. Cynthia, God bless you. Thank you for joining in. Uh, Trent, welcome to the live. I hope you're doing well great to have you guys thank you for the tgif and 2024s five 2024s and the roses ggs appreciate the support of the live jefferson big thumbs up to you man <laughs> i like your profile picture uh it's got the thumbs up there so yeah thanks for the ice cream cones as well man can i put my arm on your shoulder brother you know what trent that is really what this is about if you uh feel like you just almost need a shoulder to cry on or, or someone to lean on i'm not here to tell you that you can uh count on me or trust me or lean on me but on jesus i'm here to lead people to jesus you know the bible says um that jesus the words of jesus is those who labor and are heavy laden uh if you go to Jesus, then he will give you rest. I mean, I don't know if that's what you mean. I don't know if you feel like you're like heavy laden right now or not. But um, I can I can assure you, if you just take time to, to spend with the Lord Jesus and call on to him, he will give you supernatural rest, a rest that may not make sense to you, but it's going to bless you, man. Yeah. Um, great. So we're going to pray right now and we're going to get into the word of god so let's take this time to pray heavenly father god we pray right now we come to you in the name of jesus lord we ask you that you would have your way on this live stream that you'd bring in the right people that need to join today that need to hear what you want to speak to them tonight father so thank you for your word lord as we receive from your word tonight that we will be able to increase in our faith and learn new things and grow in you and thank you holy spirit i ask you holy spirit that as we read the scriptures as we receive and hear the scriptures tonight holy spirit that you would just bring us pure wisdom pure understanding and pure revelation purifying our hearts with your word and we thank you, Holy Spirit, for having your way on this live stream. That you would bless those who join. That you would heal those who need healing. That you would free those who need freedom. And that you would speak through me, Holy Spirit, that everything I speak is in line with the Father. And everything I speak 
is the truth. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I surrender to you. And Satan, I come against you and your plans and your assignments over this life. I break your power by the name of Jesus. And I thank you, Father God, for your angels that are watching over those who join this love. And that all lies will be exposed and truth will be revealed in our hearts, Father. Let it be done in Jesus' name. And we give you, Father God, for you are so worthy, Lord. You are so holy. You deserve it all. So we give you all, all the glory, all the praise and honor. It all belongs to you, Father God. Who are we? Mere mortals, Father. We are mere mortals, yet you, loves us, you loved us so much, Father God. You love us so much. And I pray that we'd understand more of your love tonight on this love. In Jesus' name, amen. Awesome stuff, guys. Jordan, welcome to the love. Thank you for the heart me and the nine roses there, man. God bless you. Ziggy, there can be demons behind me. There can be demons in front of me. There can be demons on my right or on my left. But guess what the word of God says? Great is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Amen. And that's what God wants us to all abide. That's why we need to all abide in him. That yes, demons are watching me right now. Absolutely. But they cannot touch me because I'm covered by the blood of Jesus. And because of the angels of God that he has sent to protect me. And that can be for you as well. Because the Bible says as well, it is written that the fight is not against flesh and blood but against principalities and powers of darkness also it is written in isaiah 54 17 that there is no weapon that no weapon formed against you shall prosper amen glory to god let that be a word for you guys to encourage you and to build your faith as well to speak the word of god over your situation in jesus name hallelujah begs good evening Welcome to the love. There's power in the name of Jesus. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Glory to God. I see a lot of highs in the chat. Hi and welcome to the love to all of you guys. I hope you guys are ready for the word of God. We just about put the chat off right now as we focus. So let's do that without any further ado. Praise God. Let's read Matthew 21 and 22. Amen. Hallelujah, guys. Let's read. Now, when they drew near Jerusalem and came to Bethpage, or Beth, I'm going to say Bethpage, guys, but there's a PH there. I don't know if you say that with it as an as a F, but okay. And they came to Bethpage at the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the vineyard. Uh, go into the village opposite you and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Loose them and bring them to me. And if anyone says anything to you, you shall say the Lord has need of them and immediately he will send them. All this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, lowly and sitting on a donkey, a colt, the foal of a donkey. So the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them. They brought the donkey and the colt, laid their clothes on them, and set him on them. And a very great multitude spread their clothes on the road. Others cut down branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Then the multitudes who went before and those who followed cried out, saying, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he had come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? So the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth of Galilee. 
Then Jesus went into the temple of God and drove out all those who bought and sold in the temple and overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. And he said to them, It is written, My house shall be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. Then the blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he healed them. But when the chief priests and scribes saw the wonderful things that he did, and the children crying out in the temple and saying, Hosanna to the son of David, they were indignant and said to him, Do you hear what these are saying? And Jesus said to them, Yes, you have, uh, yes, have you never read out of the mouth of the babes, not the babes, out of mouth, out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants, you have perfected praise. Then he left them and went out of the city to Bethany, and he lodged there. Now in the morning, as he returned to the city, he was hungry. And seeing a fig tree by the road, he came to it and found nothing on it but leaves, and said to it, Let no fruit grow on you ever again. Immediately the fig tree withered away. And when the disciples saw it, they marveled, saying, How did the fig tree wither away so soon? So Jesus answered and said to them, Assuredly, I say to you, if you have faith and do not doubt, you will not only do what was done to the fig tree, but also if you say to this mountain, Be removed and be cast into the sea, it will be done. And whatever things you ask in prayer, believing, you will receive. Now when he came into the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people confronted him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? But Jesus answered and said to them, I will also ask you one thing, which if you tell me, I likewise will tell you by what authority I do these things. The baptism of John. Where was it from? From heaven or from men? And they reasoned among themselves, saying, If we say from heaven, he will say to us, Why then did you not believe him? But if we say from men, we fear the multitude, for all count John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus and said, We do not know. And he said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I do these things. But what do you think? A man had two sons, and he came to the first and said, Son, go, work today in my vineyard. He answered and said, I will not. But afterward he regretted it and went. Then he came to the second and said, Likewise, and he answered and said, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said to him, the first. Jesus said to them, Assuredly I say to you that tax collectors and harlots entered the kingdom of God before you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him, but tax collectors and harlots and harlots believed him. And when you saw it, you did not afterward relent and believe him. Here another parable. There was a certain landowner who planted a vineyard and set a hedge around it, dug a wine press in it and built a tower. And he leased it to vineyard dressers and went into a far country. Now when vintage time drew near, he sent his servants into the vineyard dressers that they might receive its fruit. And the vineyard dressers took his servants, beat one, killed one, and stoned another. Again he sent other servants more than the first, and they did likewise to them. Then the last of all, uh, then last of all he sent his son to them, saying, 
they will respect my son. But when the vineyard dressers saw the son, they said among themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and seize his inheritance. So they took him and cast him out of the vineyard and killed him. Therefore, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to, the, to those vineyard dressers? They said to him, He will destroy those wicked men miserably and lease his vineyard to other vineyard dressers who will render to him the fruits in their seasons. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures? The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing, and it is, and it is marvelous in our eyes. You see, the people back in those times, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they didn't believe that Jesus was the Messiah. They had a lack of faith. They didn't have actually any faith at all in, in the fact that Jesus was the Son of God, the Messiah, the Savior. Um, because they probably were expecting this glorious person to come and just save everyone. But they didn't understand the scriptures because of pride in their own hearts, because of unbelief, because of fear, because of worry, fear of man that is, fear of man. They didn't fear God, they feared man. And that's that's the problem. So, so that's what we must always remember is that our faith and trust is completely in God because we are not man pleasers. We are here to do the will of God. We are here to please the Father. And without faith, it is impossible to please God, according to Hebrews 11.6. So faith is what it's all about. You've got to have faith. Therefore, I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken from you and given to a nation bearing the fruits of it. And whoever falls on this stone will be broken, but on whomever it falls, it will grind him to powder. Now, when the chief priests and Pharisees heard his parables, they perceived that he was speaking of them. But when they sought to lay hands on him, they feared the multitude. There it is right there, guys. <laughs> they feared the multitudes. That is the problem right there. They have this fear of the people. They always worried about what people think of them. They're not, they don't fear God. And that's why they killed the prophets. Because they took him for a prophet. So, um, yeah. Um, and, and even if they wanted, even if they tried to lay hands on Jesus, they wouldn't be able to because it wasn't time yet for Jesus to be handed over. And everything was going according to plan. Everything was going according to prophetic words spoken about the prophets in the Old Testament. Everything was like a puzzle piece coming together when Jesus walked on the earth. He spoke about these things because he was the one who created everything. And he knows scripture better than anyone. He is scripture because the Bible says in, in the book of John that he is the word. So he, he's, he knows all about what the prophet said. He didn't have to, um, he didn't have to go ahead and study. He probably did study the, the old scriptures because he took up a flesh and he was... You know, he had to develop from a young child. He had to develop. But so he could have studied the scriptures, but it's not that he had to. It was already in his heart because he knows where, he's, where he comes from. And he knows that he hears the father who spoke to the people, um, to the prophets of old. So it's kind of like, <laughs> it's it's kind of just so amazing. Um, let me just rotate this a little bit. All right, now that is uh, Matthew chapter 21 already finished. We're going to read now Matthew chapter 22. So Matthew 22, and then that will be for tonight. And Jesus answered and spoke to them again by parables and said, 
The kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who arranged a marriage for his son and sent out his servants to call those who were invited to the wedding and they and they were not willing to come again he sent out other servants saying tell those who are invited see i have prepared my dinner my oxen and fatted cattle are killed and all things are ready come to the wedding but they made light of it and went their ways one to his own farm another to his business and the rest seized his servants treated them spitefully and killed them but when the king heard about it he was furious and he sent out his armies destroyed those murderers and burned up their city then he said to his servants the wedding is ready but those who were invited were not worthy therefore go into the highways and as many as you find invite to the wedding so those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all whom they found both bad and good and the wedding hall was filled with guests but when the king came in to see the guests he saw a man there who did not have on wed a wedding garment so he said to him friend how did you come in here without a wedding garment and he was speechless then the king said to the servants bind him hand and foot take him away and cast him into outer darkness there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth for many are called but few are chosen then the pharisees went and plotted how they might entangle him in his talk and they sent to him their disciples with the herodians saying teacher we know that you are true and teach the way of god in truth nor do you care about anyone for you do not regard the person of men tell us therefore what do you think is it lawful to pay taxes to caesar or not but jesus perceived their wickedness and said why do you test me you hypocrites show me the tax money so they brought him a denarius and he said to them whose image and inscription is this they said to him caesar's and he said to them render therefore to caesar the things that are caesar's and to god the things that are god's when they had heard these words they marveled and left him and went their way now let's pause for a second why would jesus say this to give to god what is god's what can we give to god tithes and offerings spoken about that throughout the bible even in the beginning stages of the bible um uh yeah i think it was abraham it started with abraham who was tithing and he gave a tenth to uh mel chesedek king of salem who is a who is a priest of god um who is um basically god's personal heart priest um and he i believe it said that he is uh, uh without father or mother so he is like a supernatural being from god and uh it's it's very interesting the character melchizedek is very interesting but anyway tithes and offerings guys a tenth is what belongs to god so obviously as we pay our taxes even in this day and age we pay our taxes um and so pay what you got to pay pay your taxes but also give to god what belongs to god and the great thing about giving to god what belongs to him is that he will open the floodgates of heaven for you and pour out so much blessing for you that there's not enough room for you to receive it so actually by you being obedient to god you are receiving more than what you had and you are receiving 
more than what you would have been left over if you kept the 100% to yourself. But if you take 10% and give it to God, you will have more than 100%. If you take 100%, you will only have 100% and you'll be disobeying God. So it's if you really understand what tithe is, it's a no-brainer to just pay the tenth and it goes to the storehouse. If you're wondering where it goes, it's said that the whole tithe, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse. Amen. So that's it right there, guys. When they had heard these words, they marveled and left him and went their way. The same day, the Sadducees, who say there is no resurrection, came to him and asked him, saying, Teacher, Moses said that if a man dies, having no children, his brother shall marry his wife and raise up offspring for his brother. Now there were with us seven brothers. The first died after he had married, and having no offspring, left his wife to his brother. Likewise, the second also, and the third, even to the seventh. Last of all, the woman died also. Therefore, in the resurrection, whose wife of the seven will she be? For they all had her. Jesus answered and said to them, You are mistaken, not knowing the scriptures nor the power of God. For in the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like angels of God in heaven. But concerning the resurrection of the dead, have you not read what was spoken to you by God, saying, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob? God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. And when the multitudes heard this, they were astonished at his teaching. But when the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together. <clears throat> Then one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question, testing him and saying, Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. Let's just pause there for a second, guys, because I'm very guilty of this as well. We have not loved the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, and mind. We haven't. Let's be real. Think about how many things you enjoy doing in a day and how much time you actually separate for God. Think about it. This is exactly what God was speaking to me about as well. And it, it, it opened my eyes to say, wow, actually, do I actually love the Lord God with all my heart, with all my soul, or with all my strength? And, and with all my mind. Do I actually do any of that? Am I actually doing that? And I looked at myself. I looked at the way I lived. And I said, wait a second. I'm missing the point here. Because I'm seeing everything else is more important. Because God is only for 15 minutes a day. But no, that's not what it's supposed to be like. Because spending time with God is far more important and and uh, profitable than everything else that we do in a day so that's why also ministry like if you ministering to people casting out demons healing the sick preaching the gospel all those things are great but it's your love for the lord that is the greatest commandment. That is the first commandment. And uh, a lot of us can actually look at our lives and say, okay, wow, I have made a lot of things more important or as important as time with God. And I need to separate myself from making other things more important than God. So when you understand the importance of loving God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. You no longer see spending time with God as a duty, but as a desire. 
and it is beautiful to uh, really worship God freely in spirit and in truth. That's what the Bible says, how we should worship God in spirit and in truth. Um, and if you understand what that means, it will truly bless you when you participate in that. Amen. All right. Verse 38. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So the second right there is like the first because it's like it's it's so important that we also love others the way we love ourselves. Like you cannot call yourself a Christian but then reject people and not love on them. You got to be able to know that God loves you and he's given you so much love so that you can also share it to others. Don't be selfish and hold on to the love that you have. You have been freely given, so freely give. God didn't only die for you, but he died for your neighbor. Amen. And you might say, Jordan, but my neighbor and I aren't really best friends. Well, I'm not literally, the word of God isn't talking about only the person who lives next door to you. Your neighbor is everyone you come across. Your neighbor is a person who you uh, converse with. It might not be just people you cross. It's not like you have to like have a friendship or relationship with everyone you lay your eyes on. But to know that people that you come across, colleagues, teachers, friends, family, actual next door neighbors. These are the people you converse with, you come across like on a daily basis, perhaps. Love them. Ask God what you can do for others. Amen. And in doing that, you are obeying God because Jesus said, if you love me, you'll obey my commandments, right? So it is it is uh, powerful right there. Okay. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. While the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them, saying, What do you think about the Christ? Whose son is he? They said to him, The son of David. He said to them, How then does David in the spirit call him Lord, saying, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. If David then calls him Lord, how is he his son? And no one was able to answer him a word, nor from that day on did anyone dare question him anymore. You see, God wants to show you that he is with you, that when Jesus came to this earth, it, it's not just the son of God who's with you. It is God the father who's with you because everything that Jesus said came from the father. Everything that Jesus did was the will of the father. And so um, the Pharisee didn't know that they were rejecting God when they were, were rejecting Jesus. The Pharisees and those who mocked God Jesus did not know, did not know that they were actually mocking God in doing that. And they were denying or not denying, really just not understanding the scriptures whatsoever, even though they were supposed to be teaching the scriptures. They didn't know the scriptures. And there's many people out there in this day and age as well that think they know the scriptures, but they are blind gods. Got to watch out for false prophets. Amen. So anyway, guys, praise God. Um, that is a uh, Bible reading for, for this evening. I'm going to head over to the chat. I'm going to put the chat back on right now. And this is a perfect time for you guys to um, just put in the chat any prayer request you may have. Uh, thank you, Zoe, for the roses there. Appreciate that. And Cynthia for the heart me. 
Hey Amen. Um, I see there's two Cynthia's on the live. Cynthia Masveya, thank you for the follow there as well, and to everyone else who's um, following. Uh, I see it said in your account name, Cindy C. So I don't know if your name is Cindy or Cynthia, but anyway, that's cool. Uh, I love the way you said it, but it doesn't become a duty, but a desire. 100% chat and lovely to, to uh, have you on the live, man. Yeah, um, praying is a lifestyle. It's a desire. You know, you just have it in your heart to worship God. And that is when you are truly coming to love God with all your heart, with all your soul and with all your mind is when you actually think about how how you desire him, how do you desire to worship him and that it's not a duty if you see it as a duty you don't mean it from your heart and if you don't mean it from your heart you're wasting your time that's why you can pray for hours and it having no meaning because also if you're not praying in faith if you're not praying believing that god is so mighty and powerful then um, you can pray all you want but if you don't pray in faith then god is going to look at your heart and he's going to know exactly your intention behind why you're praying so it's also so important to pray um uh, and worship in spirit and in truth amen okay cynthia got it i think the lord speak to me right now um amen praise the lord S suleiman that's amazing I understand Kelly um, you know many times our parents have good advice many times our parents have really good advice um, so I would say pray about it because not everything that parents might say is good not everything that parents might say is the right thing so pray about it and ask God um, what you should do like for example if your parents are saying Go have fun, go have a party, go get drunk, go sleep around, have some fun. They obviously don't know, they don't understand what they're saying. And if you are a Christian and they are not a Christian, if they're not Christian, then um, you know that what they are saying is bad for you. Um, Tyron, what's happening, man? What, welcome to the love, man. I see you said you can't stay um, and things have been hectic. Sorry about that, bro. Um, but yeah, I'm well, thank you. And I hope you well. God bless you. Thank you for the heart me there, bro. Appreciate that. God bless. Uh, thank you for the Rose, Kelly and Raven. Thank you for the TGIF there. Um, amen. Uh, Marianne, God bless you. Okay. Thank you, Father God, for Baby T. We just pray for a hedge of protection, Lord. We pray for your angels to encamp around Baby T. In Jesus' name, amen. That's cool, Kelly. That's really cool. May God bless you in that. Jordan, lift me up in prayer for relationships with my family to be restored, mainly my sister, Amanda. Okay, certainly will do, Richard. Raven, thank you for the couple roses there, man. Excuse me. Let's pray for Richard's family, guys. Especially um, Richard's sister, Amanda. Father God, we pray for Richard's family right now. We pray especially, Lord, for his sister. I pray, Lord, for restoration and peace to come back into this house. And Satan, we come against all your assignments against this family. And we break its power now in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Father, for healing, freedom, and restoration in this family, Lord. In the name of Jesus, it is done. Amen and amen. Glory to God. Please pray for my little dog. My mom slapped his tail in the car door by accident. He's in pain. Oh, that sounds terrible, Begs. <laughs> my goodness. Lord, we thank you for this little dog for healing in 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 its tail and that there will be a speedy recovery from this injury in jesus name amen god also cares about the animals so yeah 
Oh, that's nice, Kelly. That's nice to hear. Wow, amazing. Praise God. Awesome stuff, guys. So, uh, Thanos says, I totally ignored you yesterday. It's probably because the comments were so packed up. The comments were so, like, busy. Um, perhaps maybe you were saying something that I didn't see to be worth answering. I'm sorry about that if, if you feel like you're offended about about that. So, But please just repeat what you uh, wanted to say or what you wanted to ask and I will be happy to answer you, okay? Um, so, yeah. Yeah, and um, anyone who has any other prayer requests, guys, we are here to pray for you. If you also have any questions, you can put that in the chat as well. Um, but glory to God and God bless you, Richard. You're so welcome, man. Uh, God is so good. And God works based on our faith, guys. We must understand that God is more than capable of bringing a miracle god is more than capable to to heal the situation to heal you to cure whatever needs to be cured he is more than able all we have to do is activate our faith and to trust in god and and a lot of you say I want to have faith it sounds good it sounds right i want to have faith but I feel like I just can't. And there's a reason why that is. And the Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So um, you need to fill your heart with the word of God. And that's why it's so important to read the Bible every day. Because that is how you grow in faith. Um, amen. Fabs. Thank you for that finger heart there. I appreciate that. Um, yes, exactly. 100% fabs. Amen. Glory to God. So, yeah, certainly, Kelly. Absolutely agree with you. Um, good night. I am going to bed. You need pray for anything, John, before I go to bed. Thank you, Bex, for asking. Um, just for me to remain focused on, on Jesus more than anything else. I uh, appreciate that. Yeah. Hello, Samuel or Samuel. Welcome to the live, man. I hope you're doing well. God bless. Amen. I'm not confident to say what I said yesterday, but another thing my family is always arguing. No problem. You don't have to share if you don't want to share. That's totally understandable. Um, and with regards to your family arguing, we must also know that most of the time when there are arguments in the house, when there's strife in the house, there's reasons for it. And a lot of it is we can't just like uh, blame Satan when we have allowed Satan. In. Of course, we can blame Satan because, yes, he's the one that causes strife, but there was an open door. So what happens, right? If... I, I'm going to say this gently, but also for everyone to listen. Guys, this is very important. What happens if there is worldly music, worldly TV shows being played in the house, okay? Soaps that you're watching on TV that people are constantly arguing with each other. Music that is so secular that the words are not in line with life the words are in line with negativity with death with profanity and perversion when there are those things flowing in the house constantly it opens portals for the enemy to come in and attack so a lot of people don't know why there is so much arguing and strife in the houses because also of what is going on in the house 
what music you're listening to, what shows you are watching, what you're filling with your, your heart, what you're filling your heart with. The Bible says that what the heart is full of, the mouth will speak. So death and life is in the power of the tongue. And, and so whatever our heart is full of and whatever we speak has effect. It has power. There are power in our words. Amen. So we have to make these adjustments in our houses to put away worldly things that are not bringing us closer to Christ, but they are causing problems. They are causing arguments and strife in the house. Um, so that's just one thing to point out, to keep in mind. Um, but we can definitely always pray for peace in the home. We can always take authority and rebuke strife and rebuke Satan. And, you know, as the Bible says, submit to God and resist the devil and he will flee. So it's also really choosing your side. You see, in the house, it's said in the Bible that I think it's somewhere in the book of Joshua that for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. A person who says that knows the truth of the Bible, knows the importance of submitting to God. And that is when you are built up to stand your ground in Jesus, who is the rock. And so that when these things come, you know what to do. You know that you can take authority in the name of Jesus over these problems. And so that is when you have chosen God as your king, God as your master. And uh, Satan then cannot do anything to you. So think about all the bad things in life, strife, arguments, unforgiveness, hurting, bullying, all these terrible things that people do to each other, words of hate, cursing, swearing, all those things come from the enemy. And the enemy's job is to get people to indulge themselves in secular music, secular TV shows, secular movies. I'm not saying all secular movies or all secular music is all from the devil, but um, a lot of it is, most of it is, I would say. And um, that's why we have to watch and be very careful with what music we're listening to because it really has an effect on our lives. Uh, we've got to be very careful what movies and what TV shows we are watching because it really has an effect um, on our lives and with the people around us as well. Like, for example, when I used to play a game called Fortnite, right? When I used to play Fortnite, it made me angry a lot of the times. And because of that, I was angry and irritated with other things in life, just in a really silly way. And because of this, um, I had to stop it. And God showed me that I need to quit playing that game because it made me angry. And anger is not from God. In fact, the Bible says anger is a mighty foothold to the devil. And so I know it might not be easy or comfortable for you guys to have to separate yourself from things that you enjoy spending time in, such as your favorite TV show or uh, this or that, but if it's not glorifying God, if it's containing profanity, blasphemy, uh, perversion, just worldly things in general, you gotta you got to know that you are allowing these things to go into your heart. And that's why it's so important um, to stay away from those things. We must understand, guys, God wants us to live in comfort. And there is comfort in Him. But our lives are not about comforting the flesh. Our lives are about being comforted in spirit. Um, and God will also, because we are comforted in our spirit, our, fl our flesh will benefit from it at times. But most of the desires of the flesh are not pure. I would say all the desires of the flesh are not pure. That's why the Bible says the heart of a man is the most deceitful so 
yeah um anyway guys i i hope that's speaking to some of you guys Dankie my mat blij om jou te sien. Dankie Samuel. God bless you man. I always need prayer in Jesus name. Yes. That's good and 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 just you know make it a daily thing man to always pray. And if you need something uh in specific prayer wise right now, you can just let me know Samuel. Good evening Drew. Hello Jordan, I hope you're doing well. Divinity, welcome. Yeah, I'm well, thank you. How are you doing? Ja, dit is 100% waar. Mooi. First pump, brother. God bless you, brother. Trent. Amen, Samuel. Uh, very true. Also so important to watch your words in what you speak of yourself and laugh. Amen to that, Fabs. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, wow. That sounds like you had a long day, Kelly. Wow. Good night, beg, sleep well. I learned to change that instead. I'm depressed. I feel unhappy, but I'm happy with the Lord. Yes, so in the flesh, your flesh is not going to like not being satisfied. The flesh is not going to enjoy um, not having what it wants. But the the desires of the flesh are evil, right? And it's because of the sinful nature that the human body is um you is born with you're born with this flesh you're being put into this flesh as we as a spirit and soul possess this temporal tent this temporal living quarters called the flesh um we give our flesh as a sacrifice to god to let him use us as he wants because our bodies don't don't belong to us anymore because we have been crucified with Christ and so it's no longer I who live but Christ lives in me because our bodies are a temple of the Holy Spirit amen God still wants us to have fun God still wants us to enjoy I'm not saying that you can't have fun in the flesh God wants us to do that but let it be pure right amen Speak life over yourself. Also agree so very much with that, Fabs. Make time for Jesus and he will make time for you. Wow. Yeah, it kind of goes goes in line with um, James 4, 8. Draw yourself close to God and God will draw himself close to you. Amen. Uh, precious, welcome to the live. Uh, these live streams usually start at around 8 p.m., south african standard time 8 p.m south african standard time amen um carl what's happening man wow that's crazy kelly wow growing up we would pray over our new merchandise we would bring home music movies etc that's great divinity and that's also important to pray over the things that you possess, uh, your possessions. And what you can also do that I learned from someone is that you can actually cleanse things for the kingdom. For example, I have a cap right here. Say someone gives me this cap as a gift. I'm not, I'm not just going to go, okay, cool. I'm going to wear this cap and I'm just going to enjoy this cap because someone's given it to me. But you don't know what the person is like. You don't know if the person was a very angry or very frustrated person. So what you do is you take the cap or the gift gladly. And even if it's a birthday gift or something like that, you say, I cleanse this for the kingdom. I cleanse this for the kingdom. You pray on it and like divinity says that you know they would pray over their stuff and uh, that's good that's powerful and it's important because sometimes if you also like inherit stuff from say your dad gives you a good old jacket that he used to wear but maybe he had a problem with swearing and all of a sudden you while wearing the jacket just 
feel like you just randomly swear um, unknowingly. Um, things like that do happen and that's why we have to cleanse these things for the kingdom. Um, and, and we have to pray over these things and even you can anoint them as well if you want. God bless you, Keziah. Thank you. My parents used to be youth pastors and worship leaders. Wow. That's so cool, Divinity. I didn't know that. Wow. Is it true that yoga is a sin? Very, very good question, Thanos. Um, yes, yoga is a sin because it's demonic practices. People don't know that when they practice yoga, they're actually performing a like worship kind of ritual for demons. And it may sound crazy. You can laugh at me now. I've had it before. But do your research and really see where yoga comes from and see that it's actually a religious thing that people do religiously. Um, it's actually a lot more than just exercising. It's a lot more than just stretching. Yoga has a spiritual side to it and it's a dark side. It's not a it's not a light side. So uh, practicing yoga is not for Christians because it's not from God and you don't know what you're doing when you practice yoga people make it innocent and that's Satan's job Satan's job is to make things that worldly people do innocent and he makes it look good but meantime it's 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 a destroyer so anyway yeah amen JD hello Oscar welcome to the live uh, thank you for the verses. God bless your soul. God bless you. Okay, thank you, Father God, for Kelly and her relationship with her parents. I pray for peace between her and her parents, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Amen. And I pray for healing in Kelly's heart, Lord, for her heart to be made whole in the name of Jesus. Amen. Yeah, God bless you, Kelly. Anytime. All right, guys, I'm going to leave the chat open for any last questions or any last prayer requests. As I'm actually quite tired tonight, to be honest with you guys, I will be wrapping things up pretty soon. Uh, Bart, I see you in the live. Welcome. God bless you so much. Um, thank you for, for popping into the live. And so I will pray for you guys before I end this live as a prayer in general. Um, but if you have any last questions or any last um, prayer requests, you can just let me know. Nonetheless, let's take time to pray. Amen. Father God, we come before you right now, Lord, and we thank you for this live stream. We thank you for this uh session as we've received your word tonight lord i just pray that what we've received tonight from your word let it bear fruit lord as it's been planted in our hearts let it bear fruit uh, a harvest father god of 30 60 or a hundred fold and i thank you father god in jesus name for a blessing of every person watching this right now i pray for their life for their school for their college their university for their workplace for their homes that whatever they do during the day lord let it be blessed and that you'd be with them in and everything in and through everything that they do during the day and that they will be reminded of you father god reminded of your goodness reminded of how important it is to spend time with you to just thank you lord as we go about our days. There's so much to be thankful for, Lord. So we pray in Jesus' name that we will be reminded of how to thank you and how to look to you always and not to lean on our own understanding, but to trust in you always. In Jesus' name, we thank you for bringing everyone back again tomorrow, Lord. If they need to join, bring them back and we give you, Father, all the glory, praise, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. I wasn't, I wasn't, uh, uh, how can I say? 
I wasn't aware that the mic was so close here and then I got a fright while I was praying. <laughs> anyway, um, you know what, Kelly? You think God doesn't hear you? That's a lie from the enemy. When you worship and praise God, don't expect anything magical to happen. When you praise and worship God, whether you think he's hearing it or not, he is listening. He knows everything about you, Kelly. He hears your heart. He hears your prayers. He hears your worship. Don't think that he doesn't. Amen. Uh, you, Carol, it's okay. Sometimes uh, TikTok don't do their job with sending notifications. And um, maybe some, like some people haven't activated the notification bell on the profile of a of a, a person that you want to see their future live streams make sure that the no notification bell is on and that um yeah that's all i can say if you haven't yet done that uh, but anyway it's okay prayer request there's an exciting career opportunity i'm praying for direction divinity it's so important that you um that you are guided by god uh for this as well because yeah um it is so important yeah so let's pray for divinity thank you father god for divinity we pray lord that if this uh opportunity for the for a career for divinity if it's if this particular opportunity lord is part of the plan that you have for divinity if it's an open door for you i just pray that it will flourish and it will be blessed and that she will uh, go through with the program, go through with uh, everything and that everything will work out, Lord, according to your will. But Lord, if if perhaps this specific career opportunity, for, if perhaps, Lord, it's not exactly where you are leading divinity, if it's not what you have for divinity, Lord, I just pray in Jesus' name that it will be exposed and, and be revealed to divinity, that she will know the right decision to make, Lord. And that you, Father, will give her direction in everything that she does. In Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, you too, Bart. God bless you so much. Thank you. God bless you, Drew. Thank you. Good night, my friend. Get some sleep and good rest, Jordan. Thank you, Chad. I'm going to have to. Thank you. Well, love and appreciate you guys. Thank you all for joining. We'll be back again tomorrow afternoon at 3 p.m. for uh, Old Testament Bible reading. And then back again tomorrow night at 8 p.m. South African time uh, for uh, New Testament Bible reading. Amen. God bless Jordan and have a peaceful night. Thank you, Fabs. Thank you for joining. God bless you and your husband and your family. Amen. Uh, God bless you, Divinity. You're very welcome. God bless from Australia, brother. Have to come visit sometime. Much love, brother. Tia, I would love to uh, come to Australia. I'd love to visit Australia one day. Um, looking forward to seeing that happen if it's God's will. Amen. Uh, with much more growth and revelations from God, I receive that in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Fabs. And to you too. Is Jesus our brother? Good question. Well, Jesus wants to be our friend and in fact um, Jesus said that those who do the will of God those who do the will of the father is Jesus's brother or sister or mother so in a way yes but we are mainly we are called to be the bride of Christ amen and that's a spiritual thing it's not a, it's not a human understanding right it's a spiritual understanding but yes in a way you know and, and 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 but jesus is sovereign right jesus is the name above all names he is the king of kings and the lord of lords right so we cannot take his position or sit at his right hand or on his left that's not for it's not for us but god will but jesus is so close with us and he wants to be our best friend he wants to be there like a brother to us he is our king though he is so sovereign he is almighty god amen uh kelly singing loud in church isn't necessarily bad um that's actually beautiful it's cool to hear that blessings brother see you tomorrow see you richard god bless and peace out to you guys 
I love you all with the love of Christ. May the peace of Jesus be with you. And I'll see you next time. Adios.